Hello guys, what's up? The Codetelic is here and welcome to my channel. On this channel I do coding tutorials and challenges, so if you are new here, consider subscribing. In this particular video we're going to focus on object-oriented programming in PHP and we're going to have some practice. I created this homework for my students, then I decided to record video because I think it will be useful for others also. Okay, so let's have a look at the homework. We have four files, three classes, and one normal index.php file. And I'm including these three classes in the index.php. The classes are called product, cart, and cart item. And basically we're gonna replicate shopping cart working principle with object-oriented principles only. We're not gonna interact with HTML at all. So here I'm creating three products given there are some arguments and we're gonna explore what are these arguments. Then I create an instance of the cart and then I call cart add product, I give the product uh, number one and with the quantity. Then I call product two add to cart, which basically does the same as cart's add product method. I give there a cart as an argument and quantity one. So then when I call number of items, when I want to print number of items in the cart, I call cart get total quantity. And this must print two because we have just added only two products in the cart. If we try to print the total price of items in the cart, this must print 2,900 because the third argument of this product must be a price. Okay? This plus this is 2,900. Then we call on cart item number two, which was the product number two. M M2 SSD. So we call increase quantity two times. And then if we try to print the total quantity, this must print four. And if we try to print the total sum, this must print 3,700. So the rule is that we should not touch index.php at all. We need to write code where to-dos are written in our three classes. We can even modify some things in the classes. We can even add more properties or methods inside the class. Even more classes are allowed. Just we need to reserve uh, remain that object-oriented pr principle. We shouldn't modify in XPHP and this code must work without any errors. Okay, let's quickly have a look at our classes. Product PHP. So we have four properties, ID, title, price, and available quantity. Okay, that available quantity is how many products we have available in, in stock. We need to generate constructor with all properties of the class. We need to generate getters and setters of the properties. Okay, cool. Then we have add to cart. Add product, the current product, uh, into cart. If product already exists inside cart, it must update the quantity. This must create cart item and return cart item from method. And bonus is quantity must not become more than whatever is available quantity of the product. We should not be able, as a bonus, we should not be able to add uh, 10, more than 10 uh, like M2 SSD items because the available quantity, the, the last argument basically, available quantity is 10. And we should not be able to increase like 12 times, for example. Okay, that is all about add to cart. We have remove from cart. Uh, and that's, I think, really obvious. We just need to remove this product from the cart. And let's have a look at the cart. The cart has just items, which is an array of cart item. Okay, nothing else. And we need to generate getter and setter for that particular item. Then we have add, add product, which basically does the exact same thing what uh, the age to cart method does of the product class. Okay, it accepts product. We have cart, which is the current class, and we need to add product into the cart. And bonus quantity must not become more than whatever is available quantity of the product. Cool. And we have remove product, of course. And we have total quantity, which is used inside index.php, the total number of products added in the cart. And we have total price of products added in the cart. That's the method get total sum. And let's have a look in the cart item. We have two properties, product, object, and in quantity. How many items we have uh, inside the cart, this particular product. 
Again, we need to generate getters and setters, and we need to generate constructor for all properties, and we need to implement these two methods, increase quantity and decrease quantity. And as a bonus again, uh, the quantity must not become more than whatever is the available quantity of the product, uh, product instance. Okay, that's it. Now let's, uh, let's focus on the implementation and start with the very first method, which is add product. Okay, let's implement this method. So let's go to the uh, cart class and here is our add product. So it's really straightforward, like there is no hidden glitches or something like this. So we have items array, which is cart item, and we need to, first of all, create an instance of cart item. Okay, cart item is new cart item, just like this. And we need to give the quantity and product inside the constructor. Let's go to the cart item. We need to generate constructor with all properties of the class. Okay, let's generate constructor. I'm going to hit Alt and Insert of my PHP Storm. Hit the constructor. I'm going to select both attributes. Click OK. And something wrong has happened. Okay, it generated slightly incorrectly, but here's my, uh, my constructor. Okay. So it generated the constructor, which accepts product and quantity, and we save both of them in the properties. Okay, let's delete this to do because we already did that. Let's go to the product again, uh, excuse me, inside the cart, and now we, we need to give that two uh, arguments. Let's have a look again inside cart item. We first accept product, second is quantity. So let's give product and quantity. Okay, but first, Let's let's check. So if the if the quantity uh, is more than whatever is the available quantity of the product, we should not actually allow this. Here have another we have another scenario actually that if the product already exists inside cart, we should update its quantity. Before we actually create new cart item, we need to check if the product already exists inside the cart item. Okay, so. We need to write in a loop, iterate over items, and just find the product. So we can have even better approach. Each product has uh, ID, which is unique. Okay, so we can create instead of normal array of the items, we can create an associative array, where the key of this associative array will be the ID of the product and the value will be a cart item of that product. And if we just want to check particular product exists inside cart or not, we can just check if the key exists inside that associative array or not. I'm going to apply both implementations for you in order to understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's return this back into a normal array. And let's do now like this. Okay, find product in cart. Okay, so for this, we need to iterate over these items for each item, and item is instance of cart item, and we need to check if items product. We need to access the product, and here we have we, we, we don't yet have the correct methods implemented to access the product. We need to generate getters and setters for product and quantity. Okay, so let's do this. Now let's do this. Uh, Alt and insert, generate getters and setters. Let's select both, hit OK, and here we have our getters and setters, okay, for both. Now let's go to the cart PHP back, and now we can call get product. We can already access the product. If items product ID, and we don't have yet access to the ID. Again, we just need to follow the path, okay? We need we need ID to compare the product's ID, but we don't have ID. Let's go to the product and we need to generate getters and setters in order to access the ID because the ID is private. Actually, we can modify this and make public, but it's always good and we are actually allowed to do this according to the rules of the homework. We can make this public, but uh, yeah, I'm going to generate getters and setters because that's more like better practice than changing your uh, properties into public. Okay, so Alt insert getters and setters. 
I'm going to select both fields, hit OK, and these were generated. OK, while we are here, we can also generate constructor. And let's do this constructor for, for all properties, just like this. OK, awesome. Uh, let's delete this to do of generate constructor. Cool. Let's go to the card again, and now we can access to the ID. Get ID. We have that method. OK item get product get id if that equals to the products get id we already have that method in this case we need to update the item okay that's that's obvious item will have its quantity okay get quantity and we need to check right here before we actually update the quantity if the items quantity is um, items quantity plus the quantity what we are going to add is more than available quantity we need to like throw an exception hit the error write an error that this is not actually allowed okay so let's do this if items get, qu get quantity plus the quantity given quantity is greater than whatever is the items products get available quantity excuse me items get products get available quantity if that is more than this we need to throw an exception let's throw an exception throw or we can just even print an echo echo the uh, item is more than in a load or something like this okay uh, let's throw an exception throw new uh, exception item um, product quantity cannot be more than whatever is the available quantity okay so again let's uh, let, we can even call product get available quantity okay the product basically if the ids are equal the product is the same as the product which is added in the cart right here okay we can even write product instead of item get product um, okay, so if the uh, quantity is more than available quantity, we throw an exception, but it, if it's less, we can even write it without else statement, because if it throws an exception, the code will be stopped right here. Okay, we can even write here, item set quantity will be whatever is the items get quantity plus the quantity given. Okay, so if the item was found, then we check if, like, the quantity validation, we run the quantity validation. If it doesn't satisfy, we throw an exception. If it was satisfied, we increase the quantity. We can even uh, make a shorthand method inside the cart item to just increase the quantity uh, with some amount of number. Okay, so increase quantity with number, we just give the quantity not item quantity plus we, we would just give the quantity and we could increase the quantity of it um, okay let's let's do like this so let's go to the cart item and we have that increase quantity and let's uh, accept here an argument amount okay amount by default is one and if the we don't pass this amount it will be automatically one okay that's not a problem at all and right here let's call if uh, and we need to write the same if statement, basically, that we don't exceed the available quantity. So let's take this if statement, come right here. Instead of item, just we need to write this get quantity plus amount, okay, is more than uh, this get products get available quantity. Then we need to throw this exception, okay? Let's take this. Put it right here uh, let's write here also this get product get available quantity and otherwise we just need to increase the quantity okay so we don't want this code right here instead we need to write here increase quantity just we need to give the quantity okay we need to increase the current quantity with this quantity whatever is this okay and let's remove this to-do, let's remove all to-dos basically. Uh, and right here we need to write this 
quantity. The quantity is private, so we can access right here. The quantity plus equal amount. Okay, that's it about the increased quantity. Uh, from the index PHP, we're calling increase quantity without any argument, and by default, it will be taken as one, and this code will work like a charm. Okay, if it exceeds the amount, we will see an error. Uh, otherwise, we will just increase the quantity. Okay, while we are right here, we can implement also a decrease quantity method. Okay, so we just follow the code. Okay, follow the instructions. Okay, if get quantity, uh, whatever is this quantity minus amount, we can accept also amount right here, which by default is one. If minus amount is uh, less than one, actually we should not have quantity less than one, okay? So if the amount is less than one, product quantity cannot be uh, less than one, just like this, and we don't want any variable right here. Otherwise, we would just decrease the amount, okay? So we are basically approaching return first approach, so we just return immediately, we just throw an exception, in this case we don't return, but we just throw an exception if the conditions are not satisfied. If everything is okay, the code will continue execution and we will just decrease the quantity. Okay, let's go to the uh, cart again. And now we find the product, and when we find the product, we call on the product increase quantity, which is cool. So now we need case when we just, we are not able to find the product, okay? So we can do like this. Uh, either we need to declare a Boolean variable and set to false, and if we find the product, we need to set it to true, and write down below, uh, we would just write, if the Boolean variable was set, we were able to find the product, or we can do it uh, in a different way, okay? So we can create this cart item at the beginning. We have that cart item. Whenever the IDs are equal, we can uh, call cart item equals item, okay? And right here down below, let's remove this line, and right here down below, we are sure that we have cart item, okay? It will be either new object or the existing one, but we need to call the same thing on both of them, okay? So, cart item, increase quantity, and if it's a new object, we assume that the quantity of the new object um, should be, we shouldn't actually give this quantity right here, okay? So the quantity of the new object should be zero, and we can pass right here zero, okay? So we created cart item with a zero quantity, then we tried to actually search the product of the given ID, and if we find that product, we assigned it into the same cart item, rewrite, and then we call increase quantity. We know that this code now works if the cart item quantity, which already exists in the cart, is two, for example, and we are like trying to add three more, then this condition will be satisfied. This will happen. Increase quantity will just add two to three, and will the cart item will be uh, the quantity of the cart item will be five. In this case, the cart item quantity we assigned it to zero, and it will do the exact same thing. Now, increase zero by the quantity. Okay, so a little bit brief explanation, just I want to make sure that you understand. So this is using the uh, normal array inside the items. We can make this as an associative array, okay? Um, actually, let's do like this. I'm gonna implement everything and then I will get back to this uh, and change. First, let's, let's implement everything and see the output. So this one, uh, the PHP Storm has warning, so let's update the documentation so that it throws an exception and we need to know about this. Okay, so now we have remove product, and let's implement this remove product. Um, actually, let's go to the index PHP and let's have a look. So we have implemented add product, okay, which is this code, and we should basically uh, add the product successfully uh, in the cart, isn't it? No, it, it, is, it is not actually adding the product in the cart. We still need to catch the case if the cart item is new one. In this case, we need to add inside the cart. Okay, so we need to catch this. So let's create one, one method for this. Okay, uh, let's, create a, let's create a private function. 
for this, uh, find uh, cart item for the given product or even product ID, product ID, which is going to be integer. Okay. Uh, so find product, we need to iterate over our um, cart items, just like this. We just write here product ID. And if the IDs are equal, we immediately return the product item, get product. However, if the for loop iterated and this if was not satisfied, this means that uh, the product simply doesn't exist in the cart and we just need to return now. Okay, that's the new function we added find uh, cart item. And right here, we can modify our code cart item equals this find cart item with the given product ID, get ID, just like this. And we write if statement if cart item was null, if it doesn't exist, we can write with exclamation if it doesn't exist or if it was null. In this case, we need to create new cart item. Okay, and when we create this new cart item, we need to add this in the items array also, just like this cart item. And finally, we call increase quantity in, in any case like we were doing it. Okay, find product in the cart comment can move at the top, just like this. So we are finding product. If the product wasn't found, we create new product, add into the array. And finally, we call increase quantity on found one or on new one. It really doesn't match. Okay, so let's go to index.php and we have implemented add cart. This should work. And now we need to implement get total quantity. Okay, this is a get total quantity is a method of the cart. Uh, let's go to the cart uh, and implement this get total quantity. So this is like also straightforward. We need to iterate over the items and take each individual item's quantity and sum up. We can even use a PHP's array reduce function for this, but I'm gonna like make things a little bit easier and create some variable uh, and sum plus equals this, uh, not this, excuse me, plus equal items get quantity. And finally, we're gonna return sum. Okay, let's go to the index PHP and we have implemented this method also. However, this uh, method is not implemented. It took cart on the product object itself, not on the cart. Okay, so let's go to the product. Uh, and right here we have a to cart. Actually, if we already have cart method implemented, uh, the uh, add product method implemented for the cart, we can use this exact same method. Okay, so here we accept the cart instance and I will just call on cart instance add product. And I'm gonna give this as a product and the quantity. Okay, and I'm gonna return whatever is returned from that method. Okay, and I think we are not returning anything from the method. However, we should return, according to the index PHP, we should return cart item object. Okay, and then we need to call increase quantity on this cart item. Okay, let's go to the cart PHP and return the cart item, the found one or the one which was uh, which was created, and we need to update the PHP method documentation also. And this obviously returns the cart item. Now let's go to the product again, and we're doing the same thing. We are adding product in the cart. Let's update the uh, documentation. It throw tag just like this, and it returns cart item. And right here at this moment, uh, this code, if we comment the following code, this one should already work, and it should already print to right here this line. So let's open terminal. You can open your uh, VS Code terminal or just Windows normal terminal or your operating system terminal. If you have PHP available using command line, you need to run PHP index PHP, just like this. And this returns number of items in cart two, which is exactly what we wanted. Okay, so let's now try to increase the quantity. Okay, let's like forget the get total sum for now, increase the quantity and try to print the total quantity again. So we implemented the increase quantity also. Remember that? 
Okay, so let's run this again. And actually, we don't have new lines right here, but it's okay. So number of items in the card two, number of items in the card four. Awesome. So that code already works. So now we need to implement total price of items in the card. Okay, so let's uncomment this uh, and this one also. And let's uh, go to the get total quantity we have, get total sum right here. We need to implement this. Okay, so we need to again iterate over the items for each, uh, for each these items is item and we need to create variable total total sum which equals zero uh, and total sum plus equals items uh, get quantity multiplied on whatever is the price of the product get products get price okay that's the rule so if we have one item one will be multiplied the price of the product and that will be added to the total sum if we have two items however two will be multiplied on the product sum and we will have double of the price and finally we just need to return the total sum okay which is float let's go to the index php uh, we have increased quantity we have total sum actually let's just put right here uh, php end of line statements right here here, 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 and here. PHP end of line, just like this. Let's run the code again now, and let's have a look. So, number of items in the cart, two. Uh, did I miss one end of line somewhere? Uh, yeah, I missed white right here, PHP. Yeah, let's run it once again. Number of items in the cart, two. Total price of items in cart, 2,900. Number of items in cart, four. And total price items in cart, 3,700. And that's exactly what is written in the comments. So that's basically like we have successfully finished our homework. That's that's like easy. Now let's, let's like have an overview, okay? So we haven't actually uh, used the method remove from cart, but we have to do written right here. And let's implement this method also. Okay. So uh, in the product, actually we have this remove uh, remove product inside the cart. Let's implement right here as we did for add product. And then we can use the same remove product method inside the product PHP. Okay. So this is like straightforward. We need to, first of all, find, find cart item. Okay, we need to call this. Let's call cart item equals this find cart item. And we just give the product ID. And it product get ID, excuse me. And in this case, this returns the cart item exists in the cart. And we need to remove that item. Okay, so just returning is not enough. We need to call unset or splice or something like this. Okay, so we can actually, if we know that the cart item is found, we can actually call array uh, array search. If we give that uh, cart item in these items, uh, it will return just the index of this cart item inside this items array, and we can call array splice, or we can even call uh, uh, unset like uh, index equals this one, and we need to call uh, unset these items for index okay and do we return something no we don't return i think anything from that method now we need to test if that function actually works okay so let's go to the index php and at the bottom let's call that's actually not required in the statements but it's written in the to do and whenever we write something we need to be responsible to the code what we have written so we need to test this if this works fine Okay, so let's call uh, on cart remove product and let's give uh, this ex actually accepts the product object itself. Okay, so we're going to remove product number two. Okay, so let's remove this product number two from the cart. And now if we call uh, get total quantity, we should see updated values. 
So the product two quantity basically exists uh, with three times in the cart. Okay, so we add it once uh, right here. We add it once and then we increase quantity two times. Okay, totally we have four items in the cart and three of them is product number two. So this one should print one. Okay, so let's let's run the code and number of items in cart. This is now three. Okay, so we obviously have some problem and we need to find out what is our problem. So first of all, let's have a look at the number of items in the cart. Okay, so let's dump the whole number of items in the cart. Cart get uh, get items. Actually, we don't implement the we didn't implement this method. So let's go to the cart. And here we need to implement getters and setters for it. So Alt insert. Uh, we actually don't need uh, setters, I think, but we can generate both of them. Okay, and let's go to the index PHP and let's call get items and let's have a look. Let's comment both of these lines. Okay, let's run this. And okay, here it is. So we have just one item. Okay, let's uh, let's print this before we actually call remove product. Okay, so index PHP and how many items we have? Okay, we have two items. The area length is two. This is the first first one. Available quantity. The quantity is one. This is the second one, which is M two SSD, and it has quantity three. Okay, so we now remove the product and. Let's actually print these items before remove and after remove to see the difference. OK, so let's remove this. OK, let's have a look. Now we have M2 SSD. So the thing is that it should it doesn't actually remove the remove doesn't work correctly. OK, so we have left M2 SSD and let's go to the cart PHP and here we have that uh, remove product. And probably this one doesn't work. Okay, the best case would be if we would iterate right here and unset by index right here, and we can just break. Okay. Uh, again, I'm going to back to the code where we have an associative area, which makes things much much more easier. Okay. So let's iterate over these items, uh, and we need to write the comparison if the item. Excuse me. If the items where is it if the items get products um, get ID equals to the product uh, get ID just like this we can uh, remove unset from these uh, items uh, for the given index okay and we need to accept right here index and item also so we remove uh, from the given index and we can immediately break right here. We don't want the loop to be continued and we don't want this line in this case. Okay, let's have a look again index PHP and here it is. So we now have one item which is iPhone 11 and it's available quantity equals one. So if we go to the product and uncomment these two lines, the total quantity final which we should see will be one. However, if we remove uh, product one, this should leave us a uh, total number of items in the cart three. And exactly that's what's written right here. Okay, so let's remove the Vardam statements and let's have a look in the car in the classes if we have something unimplemented. Okay, so we don't see any to do's right here in the cart. Let's have a look in the cart item. We also don't have generate getters and setters. We actually generated this, so we need to remove this to do. And we don't have anything. Let's go to the product. And we don't see anything also right here. But I think we have one method unimplemented that's remove from cart. And for, from, for here, we need to call cart remove product. We, we just need to give this and return whatever is returned from that method. Okay. And this will do the exact same thing. Uh, now I'm going to show you what how things uh, can change if we just uh, change the items into an associative array, okay, internally. So we have a product, and in this this find cart item basically will become really easy, and we just need to return 
uh, if inside these items for the product ID there exists otherwise we just need to we need to return null okay we just won't don't want even this is set we can use this um, this double question mark operator okay and we, we just return either this one or null the PHP storm basically underlines this because it's only a load in PHP 7 so I can just click this a switch to PHP 7.4 language level and all my underline red underlines will disappear okay so this finds the item if it's not existing the items array it just returns now okay that that is how easy it is and for remove product we just need to call unset from this uh, these items excuse me these items for the given product ID just like this okay and we don't want to return anything we don't want the loop if there exists product for the given ID in this items associative array then it will be uh, deleted and the only thing what we need to do is the adding items in the cart okay right here when we push items in the cart let's specify the product ID for that particular ID Add the following cart item and let's have a look now in the output we should see the exact same output two four and three and the also total sum is absolutely fine and okay okay so let's test this on some edge cases so if we try to add product with more than available quantity okay so if I call this available quantity on product number two more than ten times let's see what happens here we see an exception uncode exception product quantity cannot be more than 10 that's pretty obvious error okay so we increase the quantity a couple of times uh, let's now call on cart item to decrease quantity several more times and we should see another error product quantity cannot be less than one and that's basically it. so we have implemented everything what was required plus additionally we have uh, implemented the remove product which was just written in the cart and product but not used in the class in the index PHP excuse me okay that's it for this video guys I hope you enjoyed it I hope you learned at least something if so hit the like and subscribe buttons and let me know in the comment section if you want to uh, see more videos like this on my channel thanks for watching and see you in the next time